Hi my Stampin' Friends, I'm Sandra at artypapercrafters.com and my project for you today is this one. It's a little gift box, uh, more or less a cube shape. You could fit a candle in it or any treats that you wanted. I've got some speciality teas in mine, um, but, but you could fit anything in here that you uh, wanted to. And I've got a gorgeous little flower which was created using Stampin' Up's Daisy Punch. I find this a really useful punch for making flowers. You can make them in all sorts of different designs. And I've done mine like a sort of a water lily crocus type flower. Um, and I've got this gorgeous little jewel which I actually did get off Amazon. And you get ten in a packet. And they work out to be something like £2.50 for ten. But they are gorgeous. I've put some little sequins on it as well and a little sentiment and I've used the Share What You Love Speciality DSP from Stampin' Up! which I love. So I'm going to show you how I made that today. So let's get cracking on it. So to start with you will need a piece of cardstock which measures 11 and a half by 9 and a quarter um, and then you will need a strip for the um, daisies to cut the daisies out and this measures two and three quarters by eleven and a half um, by the way in centimeters in centimeters this piece measures 29 by 23.5 and the strip in centimeters is 29 by 7 then I've got five pieces of DSP you will need to cut four of them at two and five eighths by three and one eighth which is 6.5 by eight centimeters and then you will need one cut at two and five eighths by two and five eighths uh, which is 6.5 by 6.5 so that's all our pieces so let's get our scoring board and then we will score this so let's bring you out slightly so that you can see what I'm doing. Right then. So we are going to score this on the long side at two and three quarters, five and a half. Eight and a quarter and eleven. Turn it to the short side and we're going to score. Oh, by the way, that was seven, fourteen, twenty-one, and twenty-eight. Turn it to the short side and score it at two and three quarters. Six and eight and three quarters and that in centimeters is seven, fifteen point five and twenty two point five. And that's all the scoring. So let's put the board away and do some burnishing and folding. And the pad's gone a wall. Right then, let's get this burnishing done. So this is a lovely box. You will, however, for this base, you will need a piece of 12 by 12 cardstock. But I like the fact that then it's all made in one. You don't have to make a separate lid. And uh, Stampin' Up! sell lots of 12 by 12 cardstock. This colour is called Tranquil Tide. And a list of the products that I've used will all be on my website. Um, so that you will see right let's get a pencil so what we want to do is we want to cut away this piece here uh, this piece along the top we are cutting away this piece here and this piece down here and also this piece in the corner here is going to so let's start cutting up so this part here forms the base of our box. So 
we just cut up each one of these for the base so that's easy so that's that part done and now we are cutting away this piece completely that part for making flowers actually you could you could make one of the cut one of the daisies out of that I reckon so then we're cutting up here and cutting this part off here and then we're actually shortening this by about half an inch as well so I've cut that much off and then we're going to take a piece off the sides like this and down here this edge off here and, cut that and now we're shortening this by half an inch as well because these are our side flaps so we don't need them as long so we notch in as well so let's get rid of these bits that is what you are left with so you cut away all those pieces cut a little extra from the top there and this is the bottom and this is the, the top and the lid this part here forms the lid so I'm going to use my corner round punch on that So that goes round and goes together like that. That's the side flaps and that goes in like that and the bottom goes up. So that's how it's done. So now we are going to put our DSP on because it makes it easier later. So that goes on there. And these pieces on here. And this is the Share What You Love DSP. Again, I'm using the same DSP. I love this DSP. It's thick and lovely and gorgeous. And I think it's well worth every penny. And you've got, you've got like a, um, a sheen on one side of the design. And then one side's plain. So you've got, you know, you can make male things as well as female things with this DSP. Um, if you saw my gift box for gift tags, you will see that I used it to make and um, do a mailbox. So it's well worth the, the cost for this. And you've got 24 sheets in the pack, 12 by 12. So you can make oodles of projects with that. Last you for ages. And it's good and thick. It's the best DSP that Stampin' Up! have ever made. Ever made. And that's praise. Praise indeed. Right. Sticking this on, leaving a nice little border around the outside edges. So 
so that's that done so I am going to put some fast fuse down this piece and glue that down keeping it nice and straight gosh didn't cut that very straight there did I let's do something about that can't have that messy edges not in my vocabulary right then let's try again keeping your edges nice and straight and then what we need to do now we're going to cut like a little finger pull in here so that it makes it easier to get our box open so we're going to go in between with our three quarter of an inch circle punch and punch a notch and that landed look on my jumper <laughs> right then so sides in first and I always like to put a good amount of glue to make my box nice and strong and then it's something here and because this is the back of the box we're putting this piece this piece down first nearly got that wrong and then more glue on here and fold that down to the back and trim that edge because that's just a little bit out of the edge and then I'm going to get my bone folder in and I'm just going to make sure that that's good and stuck and I'm sure you could fit one of those lovely glass candles in here. Such a lovely deep box, as you can see. Nice deep box for your bits and your bobs. And that folds down into there nicely. Perfect. Love that. Nice. So I made a mistake and made this the the front of the box which I shouldn't have done so what we're doing is we're turning that round now that's the back of the box and we're going to decorate this side this time as I should have done before so let's get our strip we're going to do some stamping if I can find my delightful daisy stamp set we are in fact it's daisy delight love this stamp set it was out last autumn, but I think it's a fantastic stamp set. Still available to buy as well, so that's great. And this is a D block, so I'm just going to position that on there. And what I'm doing is same colour ink, tone on tone. So this is the Tranquil Tide stamp set. And what I've done is I need three of these to make my water lily water lily type flower so stamp down flowers done so I'm going to clean that block on my pad on my stamping scrub and then we want a sentiment so I think we might as well have your thoughtfulness brightened my day um, I'm using the G block for this. And we need a piece of Whisper White. So I'm going to my scraps bin. I seem to have lots and lots of scraps here. So let's see if we can fit that onto one of these. It's a bit big. Can't afford to lose your scraps, can you? So we'll have that piece the here. And I just realised that I haven't um, done a piece for my um, to 
go on there. So we'll cut that in a minute. And we're going to use the same coloured ink, Tranquil Tide. So that makes that easy. And we'll just stamp down your thoughtfulness brightened my day. Perfect. And then um, we're just going to snip that. So we're going to make our own tabs. Come in like that. Whoops. I think I'm going to put that ink away before I get my fingers in that. And then the same this end, I'm going to cut that down to there. And then in order to make one to layer on, so this measures 5 eighths of an inch by 2 and 4. Three eighths, five and eighths of an inch by two and three eighths. So I'm going to get my trimmer. Let's get the trimmer. Oh, so we need about three quarters of an inch by two and three quarters, probably. We'll see if we can do it out of this or not. Um, straighten that all up and then we need it. Let's lay that on there to see how we're doing. Yep, yeah, I think we can just about get that out of there at three quarters of an inch. So that's three quarters of an inch by two and a half. Just our scrap bit up. Right, let's put that away. And then what I'm going to do is to make this match up. Or shall I just leave it like that? Do you know what? I think I'm going to leave it like that instead of cutting it in. Yeah, I think that looks good. So let's put some glue on that. And it comes out. And layer that on there. There. That looks good. And uh, now we are going to punch out our daisies using our daisy punch. So line that up into the punch. Right then, so in order to make them curl up, we're going to get our bone folder and you'll need to hold them right there where they leave that circular bit because otherwise you'll rip them off instead of curl them. So give them a jolly good curl, curl up. And you can see that that's made that curl up and then you just get your fingers and push them together like that. And you can see that you can make them curl or come down a bit. You can see that according to how much you pull them, you can make them curl up more or less. 
or you can just have them fl completely flat with no dimension at all like that or you could just leave them flat if that's how you wanted to put them on your card but I'm going to give them lots of dimension see how I've just ripped that see what I mean so we need to make another one now so let's get the tranquil tide ink back out typical I just told you not to do that and I've done it Fortunately, I love a punch because it makes it so easy then to just cut another one out. So line that up in the punch. And punch out. Right. Try not to do the same thing again. So once you've done them, curl them up. And then we are going to interleave them. So we are going to put, <clears throat> I'm going to put some wet glue on them. So let's bring you down a bit more so that you can see what I'm doing. So some wet glue in the, I've got blobby bits on there. Some wet glue on the centre and then offset those by a third so that you can fit your other one in. So can you see what I mean by offsetting them by a third? So you've got one row uh, on the base and then you've offset by one third in. So you've got another gap still to fit your third one into like that so let's glue our third one in and you're gluing it in so that you're offsetting it so that you have no gap so can you see what I mean now I have no gaps between those petals at all so they all come together like that so that's how you get your three together and then what I'm going to do is pinch them up like that so you've formed almost like a tight tight ball and then you open that back up a bit and that is how I've created my water lily and you can just open up the outer leaves if you want and have them open or you can just leave them all fully closed but we're going to now put our little jewel in I'll see if I can find a link to these and put them on my blog but you can see that they really are very pretty and what I'm going to stick those that on with is some blue dots <coughs> We're going to stick a couple, if not three, glue dots because I want to make sure that it's good and sticky. In fact, I'm going to go for four because you've got like a slight depression in there and you don't want it coming off. So stick that in the centre. You can see that you've created a really, really beautifully pretty flower there and with such a gorgeous punch and you can just pull the petals as up as you want gorgeous love it right let's pull you out a bit because now we are going to finish off our box right so I'll get rid of the flower that I tore so this is the box this is the front of the box that we said we was going to decorate with our sentiments so we need some dimensionals for that to put that on with and then we are nearly done so 
your thoughtfulness brightened my day across there and then we're going to stick our um, I think I put that on with a, another dimensional so we're going to stick that on with a dimensional like that oh it's beautiful oh, I love it right now I did put some sequins on here uh, and why not do it again I say let's go for broke so these are Stampin' Up's Iridescent Sequin Assortment and I've got my little china marker that helps me to pick them up and I just use a bit of wet glue so wherever you want a sequin put some wet glue then I pick them up so I don't think it matters what colour we use because all of these colours will go So that's those on there and then we'll put some on the top, I think I put two on here and one in the corner here and we'll just pick an orange one up, stick that on there. And these do take a few minutes to dry so while it's drying you don't want to handle the box too much Well, I am off for a cup of tea because I'm thirsty after all this talking. So that is my little boxes made. You can see that the flower's probably more curled on that one than it is on that, but it's entirely up to you. You've got free range to make the box whatever way you want. I hope you'll have a go at making one of these little boxes. They're really rather sweet and very useful. All details will be on my blog. Uh, so click in the down arrow description bar um, and um, all the products used will be on there as well uh, and if I have time I will put all the dimensions on for you as well hopefully with a link to the little pearls as well uh, thank you so much for watching uh, sharing and subscribing my videos and for subscribing to artypapercrafts.com I'm very grateful and should you need any crafting supplies I'll be very grateful if you chose me as your demonstrator. Thank you, bye for now, bye!